I am <laughs> Peter Stillman. That is not my real name. <laughs> Thank you very much. Goodbye, Peter. I could have spared you all that, but I thought it would be best to see it with your own eyes. I understand. No, I don't think you do. I don't think anyone can understand. Whatever I do or do not understand is probably beside the point. I make no claims about understanding Peter or what you might have suffered. The important thing is that I'm willing to help. I think you should take it for what it's worth. You mustn't assume that Peter always tells the truth. Then again, it would be wrong to think he lies. You mean I should believe some of the things he said and not believe others? That's exactly what I mean. Your sexual habits, or lack of them, don't concern me, Mrs. Stillman. Even if what Peter said is true, it makes no difference. In my line of work, you tend to meet a little of everything. And if you don't learn to suspend judgment, you'll never get anywhere. What I'm interested in are the other things Peter said. I assume they're true. And if they are, I want to hear what you have to say about them. Yes, they're true. Peter has a child's way of telling it, but what he said was true. Tell me about the father, anything you think is relevant. Peter's father is a Boston Stillman. I'm sure you've heard of the family. He went to Harvard like everyone else in the family. He studied philosophy and religion, and by all accounts was quite brilliant. He wrote his thesis on 16th and 17th century theological interpretations of the new world. Then he took a job in the religion department at Columbia. And his mother? dead. Suicide, they say. From the photographs I've seen, she was very pretty. Something about an overdose of pills, but of course nothing could be proved. There was even some talk that he had killed her. Those were just rumors and nothing could be proven. The whole affair was kept very quiet. She was young, 35 or 36. After that, Stillman more or less dropped out of sight. He stayed on inside the apartment, but he hardly ever went out. Nobody knows what happened. I think, probably, he began to believe some of the far-fetched religious ideas that he had written about. It made him crazy, absolutely insane. There's no other way to describe it. He locked Peter in a room in the apartment, covered up the windows, and kept him there for nine years. Try to imagine it, Mr. Oster. Nine years. An entire childhood spent in darkness, isolated from the world, with no human contact except an occasional beating. I lived with the results of that experiment, and I can tell you the damage was monstrous. What you saw today was Peter at his best. It's taken him 13 years to get this far and I'll be damned if I let anyone hurt him again. How was Peter finally discovered? There was a fire. They discovered Peter in his room as they put out the flames. Stillman knew he was a failure by then. He claimed that he was burning up his notes, but I think he decided to burn everything down. Have you ever been trapped inside a burning building, Mr. Oster? Never. It's terrifying. But you know that. You're in the rescue business, aren't you? It depends on who's paying and what they're expecting for their money. What happened after the fire? The trial. Everything had been destroyed in the fire, so there was no concrete evidence but there was Peter's condition, the room he had been locked up in, 
those horrible boards across the windows. Eventually, the police put the case together. Stillman was judged insane and sent away. And Peter? He was sent to a hospital. He stayed there until just two years ago. Is that where you met him? Yes, in the hospital. I was his speech therapist. I worked with Peter every day for five years. I don't mean to pry, but exactly how did that lead to marriage? It's complicated. Do you mind telling me? I don't think you'd understand. There's only one way to find out. To put it simply, it was the best way for Peter to get out of the hospital and give him a chance to lead a more normal life. Is it true that Stillman is being released? Tomorrow, he'll be arriving at Grand Central Station. What do you want me to do? I want you to watch him carefully. I want you to find out what he's up to. I want you to keep him away from Peter. I have a photo, but it's an old one. In other words, a kind of glorified tail job, I suppose. I think you should understand that I can't prevent Stillman from coming to this building. What I can do is warn you about it, and I can make it my business to come here with him. I understand, as long as there's some protection. He'll be on the 641, arriving from Poughkeepsie. How do you know? I make it my business to know. One last question. Who was it that referred you to me? A policeman I treated once did some research. He found out that you were the best man in the city for this kind of thing. I'm flattered. From what I've seen of you so far, Mr. Oster, I'm sure we found the right man. Here's a check for the first 500. I hope that's enough. Have I made it out correctly? Paul Oster. Yes. That was to prove that Peter wasn't telling you the truth about me. It's very important that you believe me. I really do think you're the answer, Mr. Oster. <laughs>